whenever I hear of the government going into a newsroom to do something other than deliver coffee, I become frightened because the, the government should not as a general rule be any part of journalism. So a big question is what's the quid pro quo? How much government coercion might there be with all of this? Uh, is the government trying to uh, ultimately dictate speech and dictate how journalists are supposed to do their jobs? And it doesn't matter what your political stripe might be, that's just not a good idea, especially when you have such a competitive communications uh, landscape. If government were to bring any coffee into Fox, I'd get a taster before I would touch it. Look, this is I mean, it, as if the IRS and the EPA and the NLRB haven't done enough the damage. The FCC now has to trample on what, r r what rights are remaining. This is an outrage disguised as a study. The FCC regulates the media, and it has the power to remove your license, meaning to ruin you overnight. So any questions it asks is never innocent. And what is it asking about critical information needs? Who decides what's a critical information need? The critical information need is a concept that you have in Kiev or in Moscow. You don't have it in the United States. Everyone decides on his own. The idea that we, that we don't have enough diversity in the media of the United States, there are more media today than any in the history of mankind, including cave drawings. This is absolutely an outrage. And what, what the House of Representatives ought to do tomorrow is to pass a law withholding a p every penny from any such study now or evermore. They're literally going to train government bureaucrats to come in and try and talk to news professionals about how they do their jobs. Sound familiar, Obamacare? Um, they are, uh, they are going to ask things like, what's your news philosophy? Uh, they are even going to uh, be trained not to show too much alarm or too much emotion. I suppose that's when they're interviewing the Fox News. So you don't team. buy Commissioner Wheeler. You don't buy the statement. You don't buy the walk back. You don't buy anything. I think it's outrageous. I, I'm outraged that taxpayers are funding this. I mean, if this is a, a university study and they want to come in and look at this, but no, this is it's scary. They, as Charles said, they hold they wield tremendous power, the FCC, over licensing, um, and and just just by virtue of being there, the chilling effect of what they're doing. And what do they know about deciding what? news, what's news and what's not news. So what else is be, isn't being reported and what are the ramifications of this kind of selective reporting? To discuss this, I was joined by Amber Lyon, three-time award-winning, Emmy award-winning journalist, photographer and filmmaker. Well, I, I, I think that it, it's a use of, of propaganda and, and this is something that, that goes back to uh, the terms weapons of mass destruction. The American public was fed that phrase over and over and over leading into the Iraq war and and now we're starting to see it as far as nuclear weapons and Iran goes uh, in, in the US Liz and um, and and I just fear that that the public is continuing to be fed propaganda that unassuming Americans don't realize they're being fed to to lead us into another potential conflict now the job of the media is supposed to be you know this fourth estate and to you know show uh, you know all possible angles and basically just to, to report the truth. Um, what do you think it is? I know that you worked for CNN. Um, why would it be otherwise? Why would they be presenting um, war propaganda, as you call it? Well, I, I really can't uh, speculate as to exactly why this is going on, but I can tell you that uh, when I, I was working for CNN, we did have a, a documentary that we aired on um, the Bahrain situation, and that's where we have our naval base, which is right across from Iran, so we strategically want to keep that naval base, and it was very difficult to get stories on about Bahrain. I even uh, came out a couple weeks ago talking about the censorship of that documentary on, on CNN International. And um, uh, above all, Liz, I, I feel that the American public is not being fed the, the true story about what's going on in this region. And, and it's, it's very dangerous because when the public is constantly fed messages that, that are potentially leading us into a war that may not be necessary, it, it's, it's not fair to the American people and it's not fair to journalism because the truth isn't being told here. What's being told here is the way that these networks 
networks want to spin the truth, and that's leading us into another potential conflict with Iran. And I, I, I've been trying to tell my, my followers on my Facebook page and, and on Twitter to really open your eyes, because once you notice and, and start to, you take the blindfold off, you start to see all of this anti-Iran propaganda floating through the American mainstream media. And, and it's symbolic of exactly what was going on before the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, Liz. Now, uh, we do have a clip uh, of this documentary that you filmed. I want to take a look at it, and then we'll talk more about the documentary and uh, the way CNN reacted to it. Okay. The protesters seem to have disappeared from Bahrain's capital thanks to the intense military crackdown. We ventured into another side of Bahrain, a side the government didn't want the world to see, to find out where they've gone. We drove to the Shia villages, passing military checkpoints as we left the capital. So we're gonna hang out with these protesters for a little bit. This is what the protests look like today. Young boys who've been hit with tear gas. Now, uh, the documentary that we just saw a clip of never aired. It never aired on CNN International. Why not? Well, I, I still haven't been given uh, an exact reason as to why not why it didn't air. I went and visited with the president of CNN International, Tony Maddox, twice uh, on behalf of my dumbfounded crew, and, uh, and we were never given uh, a, an answer. And so I started uh, investigating the situation, Liz, after several employees who'd been at the network for years approached me and said, you need to look into this. There's something going on. It's very strange. They're not airing your documentary. And after some investigation, we found out that CNN International is actually making money from the Bahrain regime. They, they are a, a customer of Bahrain. Bahrain is paying CNN International to create content that shows Bahrain in a favorable light uh, and, and then air also not only to create that content, Liz, to then air that content on CNN International.